The King's Park and Botanic Garden in Perth is renowned for displays of stunning WA native plants that inspire the home gardener to put some in at their place. But not everyone has a garden big enough. Or do they? There are a number of Western Australian plants which can prove a little bit difficult to grow in people's gardens, but people might be surprised to learn that they can grow them in pots. Dr Tony Scalzo is one of Kings Park's plant breeders and has some tips for growing WA native plants in pots with outstanding results. Well, look at this. The Kings Park fairies have been doing their magic. Yeah, well, these are some great displays and we've got here a whole lot of different examples of West Australian native plants growing in a range of pots, including terracotta pots, glazed pots, and also showing the breadth and uh, beauty of West Australian plants. So they're really spectacular. And these are the types of plants that people can grow in their homes, uh, whether they live in uh, apartments, units, or houses which don't have large yards. Feeds are looking so good. What's the trick? Most native plants, commercial native potting mixes are fine in terms of drainage. However, there's a lot of West Australian plants that are fuss pots and they require uh, an amendment to the potting mix to provide better drainage and aeration. And so what you can do is you can either use a coarse, sharp river sand, like a, a propagation sand, or alternatively, a coarse perlite type product like we've got here. So to achieve a good aeration and drainage, what we're adding in is 10% uh, perlite and uh, that's essentially one litre of perlite added into 10 litres of uh, potting mix. And you mix it through thoroughly to achieve good aeration and drainage throughout the mix. What are you planting up first? Uh, so the first combination I'm going to do today is this uh, beautiful combination of Verticordia chrysanthella, the yellow plant here, and the iconic Leshnoltia biloba dark blue. So what we're going to do first is we're going to uh, improve the drainage by adding these little thumb pots and putting them over the drainage hole and that'll lighten up the pot as well. So now we're going to add the potting mix to uh, our glazed pot that we've selected as being an appropriate size for the plants that we're using here today. Knock out our plants from the pot. You can see here, well-grown plants with good root system. Now, a question. Do you tease the roots? Um, I would not if the roots don't look as if they're pot-bound. And I, in this case, this is a well-formed root structure and I wouldn't disturb it in this instance. But if it was bound, you would gently tease that out? I would, yes. You could just gently tease it out at the bottom, like that. And some people sometimes put a little slash down the side of the roots to just to break up the... If they've coiled. If they've coiled. You then put it in the pot and you make sure that it's about one centimetre or so underneath the level of the pot because you don't want to be burying any stem or foliage because that can then lead to collar rots and those sorts of issues. So I'm now going to add in the Leshnoltia to this pot as well. I'll just knock that out, not showing any signs of root coiling. So it's, it's good to go. Um, so I just pop it in the pot. We can then... Uh, add in a uh, potty mix around the plants to just stabilise them and uh, then progressively fill the pot up uh, with our potting mix. You gently firm down, but you don't want to over firm down because that'll reduce the uh, aeration and drainage on the mix. And now it's ready to add our inert mulch. We just add it into the surface like that Give it a good covering on the surface of the pot. Oh, and I think that's come up looking really, really great. Great finish. In this wide, shallow pot, which is made from fiberglass reinforced cement, I'm planting Stylidium cladosum, Conostylus setosa, Orthrosanthus mullerii, Stylidium hispidum and Stylidium angustifolium. <laughs> Tony
Tony's planting, Actinodium species Fitzgerald River, and Hibertia stellaris. All of these plants like a sunny position and watering every other day or more in hot weather. Those planted up pots look terrific, but not all WA plants need perfect drainage, do they? Exactly. I mean, there's a few examples uh, of things like Baronia megastigma, which naturally grows in very swampy areas in the southwest. And because it lives on the edge of swamps, it has its feet continuously moist. So one option for people to consider is to use a self-watering pot. And in that situation, because it has a reservoir in the bottom of the pot, the roots of this plant will have access to water throughout the life of the plant. And that allows it to uh, get over that problem of the roots drying out. So here, you just use a regular Correct. potting mix? We don't add any addendums uh, to the mix, uh, in that we don't need the mix to be quite so free draining like some of these other fuss pots. So... Should I pour that in? Sure, that'd be great. Thank you for your help. OK, so we can now put the plant in. Got a great root system. We'll just give it a bit of a tickle out. We want to make sure it's not too deep because we don't want to have uh, organic material against the stem of the plant. OK, that's looking great, Josh. We're just going to add a little bit of uh, mulch to finish it off. Most baronias prefer light shade and shelter from hot afternoon sun. Most importantly, keep the roots moist. When it comes to maintenance, here are Tony's top tips. Feed in spring and autumn with controlled release native fertiliser. Prune lightly after flowering to keep plants tidy and to maintain a compact habit. Repot every three to four years. Root prune and cut back some of the top growth at the same time to prevent plants from stressing. And top up the pot with fresh potting mix. Don't these look great? Yes, Josh. I mean, I think this just goes to show that West Australian plants can look great in pots and people who live in apartments and units and small houses can enjoy these magnificent plants in their own gardens.